guys, and welcome to the One in Twenty Show. Today, I am joined by Jimmy Moreno, the Renaissance man himself. He is a singer, a songwriter, a writer, an actor, and overall really sweet guy. Today, he's going to be chatting about his 10-minute musical, Into Light, that he created as a part of Show Search through the Foundation of New American Musicals. Jimmy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, man. Yeah, of course. So, how did this whole thing start? Um... I know that you had mentioned to me that you really, uh, it was kind of last second that you got into the whole thing. So if you want to yeah. kind of start that way. Yeah. So, um, so I was invited to sing in a concert through the foundation for new American musicals called future fest, which is new performers singing new works. Great. A lot of fun. Um, my friend which is at 54 below, by the way, isn't it? Uh, the, the New York one is at 54 below and the Los Angeles one is at Rockwell table and stage. Um, mm-hmm. so I was at the LA one. Okay. Um, and, uh, one of my friends, uh, who was music directing the, the cabaret Mm -hmm. played piano for it. Great. Um, after the concert, I talked to, uh, Bob Klein, the guy who organized it. We're just chatting about musical theater, stuff like that. And my friend, Justin, who music directed the show comes up and goes, he writes musical theater too, which was a bold faced lie. Um, (laughs) I had written a musical theater song. You're like, I can. I was like, I, I can sure try. <laughs> yeah. And Bob goes, oh, that's great. We have a deadline approaching uh, in about a month and a half for this competition we do for original 10-minute musicals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool. I'll check it out. Uh, and then he actually sent me an email the next day. He's like, just wanted to follow up. I was like, oh, now yeah. I'm in it. <laughs> Darn. Um, so I, I read up on the competition. Uh, mm-hmm. It seemed really cool. that, that It was basically... Uh, out of those who submitted 10 minute musicals, they would take six of them mm-hmm. for finals. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd find out in like late April if you were a finalist. And then in June, they would put up your shows with equity actors in a real theater for a panel of judges. Wow. Uh, meanwhile, in the middle, like in the month of May, you'd get paired up with a mentor, a professional musical theater writer who'd coach you on your show, say, these are some things that worked. These are some, some things you could do better. Um, wow. So I started writing a show. Frantically wrote it for like three weeks and then scrapped the whole thing because it just wasn't working. Yeah. Um, and it was it was at the point when I was like, maybe I don't do this because it's, you know, it's too late. Um, and so was, was this your first chance at, at, or like the first time actually trying to do, yeah. write an entire show? It was the first proper stab at, because I'd talked about it before, but I'd never mm-hmm. actually done it. Um, sure. And then I was actually at a rehearsal for, uh, I was in Bring It On, the musical at, mm-hmm. at College of the Canyons. Mm-hmm. I was at a rehearsal, went over to a piano practice room and just started kind of noodling. And got an idea and jotted it down, Hmm. went off to rehearsal. That weekend coming up was Easter weekend. Went to a house with my family and they had an old piano. And Hmm. I sat at that thing for like two days straight, banged out a good amount of the music, went back home, spent like a week and a half, two weeks revising the book. Um, And for your entry, you had to film a performance. Mm -hmm. So I actually got my friend Michelle Zarlinga to come in, filmed a performance in a black box. We literally had time to do two takes and then wrap it. Sent it in, got selected. Uh, got paired with a mentor who I really love. His name's Ryan Scott Oliver. Um, wrote uh, Jasper and Deadland, 35 millimeter. Wow. He gave me really valuable coaching. Uh, and then the show went up, uh, and I was uh, I was lucky enough to be selected as the the winner. So it was a really good time. That's just it's incredible. Like that was a perfect nutshell. Like that was amazing to put all of that into um, something that was so brief. Which it sounds like the whole process was just so brief. I mean to be able to put something together that was two to three weeks. Like we, we just chatted about how um, that would have driven somebody nuts yeah. that had worked probably a year or two on their 10 minute musical, yeah. which is interesting because would they have really like, would they have been confused by like, Oh, I, I don't know. Like, is this good? Is this not good? They had probably trial and error, but maybe the purest thing about your show was that you, it just came out of you and you were like, this is it, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's how you felt. But. No, it definitely, it was It was one of those things, you know, that mm. uh, uh, Ben Gibbert from Death Cab for Cutie said that when he wrote, I will follow you into the dark, he, he rented an office space that he'd go and sit down and make himself write every day. Huh. He went in, sat down, boom, the lyrics just happened, looked at the clock, he'd been there for 30 minutes, picked up his lunch and left. He's like, that's it, that's the song. Um, and and wow. it, it, I, I definitely am not going to compare myself to, to Ben Gibbert, but like, <laughs> It was that kind of thing. Yeah. The songs just happened. And wow. I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're, we're going with it. Well, I guess it's um, the best intentions is when you really feel um, feel your work and you feel like it's really like genuine. I feel like the best work from a film perspective, the best things that I've ever put out have been things that were more, um, that I didn't try to structure too much. I did. You know, I, of course, like I still tried to keep a little structure 
but I just really went out there and felt it. And it sounds like into light was kind of like that for you. It, it absolutely was. Cause it mm. was, it, you know, it, it's a, it's a two person show. It happens in, it's a 10 minute musical, but it's real time. It's one mm. scene, no scene changes. Oh wow. Beginning to end is, is a moment. Mm. Um, and so it was, it was, it needed to be organic. I, mm. I couldn't really get into the nitty gritty of, of the theatricality of it. Cause I didn't want to take away from this, what I wanted to be a really human moment. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the director of show search who had to direct all six shows, mm was really, really understanding of that. He mm. was very much about the humanity of the piece, about the truth of the piece. Wow. Um, we, we definitely made some edits during the the days of workshopping it. Because mm. the, the final thing was, um, you know, we had a, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 10 to 6, like, workday style rehearsals of mm. them doing all six shows. Wow. So bouncing between them and stuff. And then Sunday, they went up. So you had to be pre- Did you have to be present for more than just your your rehearsals I did um, okay. but it's interesting I learned so much about mm. about writing about a rehearsal like room from watching other people's shows go up yeah. um, I, I learned so much and my, my all of the people who I was who, who were competitors were fabulous mm. the three shows that made it for the because um, they do a, a high school age category yeah, so and then a that. college and young adult category okay. Okay. the other young adult competitors because I wrote Into Light which is a two person drama in real time uh, a gentleman named Chris wrote this fantastic farce about uh, Santa at Christmas time, huh. uh, getting mad about taking Christmas off the Starbucks cups. Oh, that's funny. So it's this big, big high farce. He's, yeah. he's very inspired by like Book of Mormon, Avenue Q. That sounds like very yeah. Book of Mormon. Uh, and then another writer named Mina who wrote a like 1920s murder mystery comedy. So there were three really different shows. Wow, how do you how do you how do you stick to a niche like that when it's so little time? You know what I mean? It's yeah. almost, I've always felt like for me when I create a short, it's always harder to create a short because you're, you know, you're confined by a certain amount of time. Oh, absolutely. And you really, it might be good because you really have to tell that story like in a, th- in almost a thought of the entire spectrum. Mm-hmm. So with that in mind, um, how, what's like the synopsis of Into Light? Okay. Just for people who don't yeah, know. Yeah, totally. So, uh, so... It takes place in a man named Charlie's apartment. It's the middle of the night. Charlie wakes up and finds uh, his ex-girlfriend, who is now deceased, Beth, standing there just watching him. Hmm. Um, after denying that it's really her, she uh, makes him realize that it's her by describing their last moments together. Hmm. Um, reveals that she's only back for a limited amount of time. Hmm. He can ask her any three questions he wants, and she will answer them honestly and fully. Hmm. And after that, she's gone again. Hmm. And that while she's there, he can't touch her. Um, is, she a, is she a ghost? Because I think you mentioned that she kind of is. It's, it's, uh, it's unclear. She's sort of okay. spectral in okay. that sense. I wouldn't okay. say she's like a ghost, but she's otherworldly. Hmm. Um, and uh, when she's revealing their last moments to, to sort of say, it's me, mm-hmm. um, she reveals that when she was diagnosed with, with a terminal illness, he panicked and he ran out. And by the time he came back a few days later, she had passed. Oh, wow. Uh, and that's revealed. Yeah, and that's this. revealed through through okay. their... Okay. That's how she proves that it's her. Is that revealed... Oh, is it... I was going to say, is that revealed through her arc? Like, is, does that's, she bring that out of that, him more? That actually begins kind of early when she, he's in denial that it... Because how could it possibly be her? Right. And right. that's how she proves <laughs> it. Because they're, sure. they're last moments that no one else... No one else was there for. Right. Um, so his first question is, do you hate me for hmm. what happened? Hmm. And her you know the long and short of it is yeah kinda that was really messed up you left yeah. me alone yeah um, but it's musicalized so it's takes longer <laughs> uh, uh, that's really his funny. his next question is what happens when we die hmm. and she tries to explain it the best she can and by saying that it feels like you are turning into light wow um, to sum it up oh okay, okay. Uh, and yeah. then he you know he he tries to get her to stay he's like look I'll never ask another question again just stay here with me hmm She's like, you know, that's it can't work like that. Mm-hmm. So he runs, pulls the sheet off of his bed and holds it between them so they can hold hands through the sheet because they're not actually touching. But uh, it's the closest they can get to touching. Okay, that's interesting. And his last question is, when will I see you again? And she starts reiterating what it's like to die. Um, as if to say, like, someday, but not, not until then. How uh, does it resolve? As they're getting to the big crux of this duet... Of uh, of she's basically saying someday when you're when you burst into light we'll be together again. Yeah. As it gets to the climax of it, the voice is just cut off, and he lowers the sheet and she's gone. Wow. And he picks the sheet back up, has a moment with it, 
lights out. Wow. And so it's just this, you know, I, I wanted to leave the audience asking, was she there? Was this a vision? Was this a dream? Yeah. How much of it was real and how much wasn't? Yeah. But I think that the, the, the core of the story, the heart of it is real, no matter yeah. whether or not she was. Wow. Um, Man, that's wonderful. I don't thank think you. I don't think we ever had chatted about that um, just in person. I think you had mentioned that you're writing this thing. But I think it's interesting because a lot of people, um, like we were talking about, are so supportive of the arts in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and theater is such a medium in which that is expressed, in which that love is expressed. And I think what I mean by that is like face value. People were probably like, oh, wow, you have a project. You're creating something. But now that you just shared that, I want to know kind of what your motivations were behind writing it. Um, maybe some inspirations or I, I would even get it. I would go past the surface layer too. like what what were you really feeling through that process and what caused you to like finally draw it? Like you said, it was spontaneous. But how did that kind of. How did you draw that out of you in, in two to three weeks? Yeah, it, 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 it came down to a couple things. Um, the biggest thing that I wanted to do, I, I wanted to provide a real human moral and a human experience while also giving an escape. Hmm. I wanted I wanted there to be a second chance in a situation in which no one gets a second chance. Hmm. I wanted to see how someone might use that. Interesting. Um, also, interesting. as someone who I, I have diagnosed general anxiety disorder, I struggle hmm. with my anxiety a lot. Hmm. Charlie, the the man in the story also struggles with anxiety and that's mm-hmm. why he ran out. He was mm-hmm. having a panic attack. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the notion that maybe he had a chance to come back from, come back from that. Maybe his, mm-hmm. his mental illness in that case wasn't, wasn't the note that he ended his relationship mm-hmm. with Beth on and he had a chance to end it. So there was a little bit of wishful thinking there uh, from someone who also struggles with that. Right. Um, I, I really just wanted to see in its purest form, this, this, relationship that didn't end on best terms from two people that are not perfect Hmm. they both have their their faults they both made their mistakes but a chance to come together and go it is perfect for what it was Hmm. and just leave it at that um wow and you know because after i wrote it too i i was like man i I still really love this story i'm really passionate about having written it Mm -hmm. i want to expand it right i want to make it a some something bigger so that i can put it on but then i sat down and looked at it and i went no to make this any longer i think does a disservice to what it has to be right. so so in that sense the constraint of it really is one of the things that drew it out that that rule of this show has to be 10 minutes when you sent in the performance video for show search it had to be under 10 minutes full stop um and having that really put my brain in a way of thinking that i'd never processed before you know because i'm a big fan of jason robert brown stephen sondheim those musicals aren't exactly wow easy breezy 90 minutes uh they're no. they go on yeah so that's always something i've wanted to write Having to fit a story in 10 minutes made me shift my thinking in a way I've never done before. Wow. Um, Gosh, I'm captivated. Seriously. Well, thank, you. thank you. It it really, I think, it's kind of, honestly, for me, I really think I understand that motivation. Oh, man, it got me a little emotional too. Wow. Oh, I haven't even seen it. <laughs> um, but I, I just understand, I understand um, the anxiousness. Like I really do... I know what you mean by um, by trying to channel that into a, into a character. Mm-hmm. When I when I wrote and created my film Trapped that I did with Zach Kemper, mm-hmm. um, that's that was the worst time in my life. I remember seriously um, feeling so beat up because I was so in my head about things, and honestly, to the point where I was almost suicidal at points because I was so introspective. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think about the world around me. And I think, I think maybe you could speak to that. Um, I'm sure that that has been almost the impetus for you to keep going on. No doubt. Oh, absolutely. Especially with anxiety that so builds inside of you, you need to have a release. And that's why I feel like your piece must be so beautiful. Well, There's no you. doubt why it would have won It's compared to Starbucks and well, you know what I mean? I, I, I loved, I loved the other two pieces as well. I was very mm. lucky to share the stage with them. They mm. were very different. Mm-hmm. And, and I can only imagine how difficult that must be to the judges. Cause how do you compare a farcical comedy to a drama in real time? Wow. They're totally different standards, both valid. I mean, look wow. at book of Mormon, but that show will never close mm-hmm. because it's a really good show. It's and a comedy. It's so funny. Look at Hamilton. That show will never close. It's a drama. It, they're, they're, they're different. 
I, I would almost use different uh, hallmarks for them. They're, they're different art forms, but both equally valid. Mm. Um, mm. I, I definitely, in retrospect, I think, I think it might have worked to my advantage that it was the only drama on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I wouldn't say that them, them being comedies discredited them. They were both well-written shows as well. Mm. Might have been a judge might have been in a particularly sentimental mood that day. You, you never know because I think that's one of the beautiful things about theater hmm. about about the fact that it's a live art form you can't just bottle it and save it for later hmm. it is happening in that moment hmm. and if you as an audience member go in you know into light if you just have the best day of your life and you walk in and see that show you're gonna be like yeah I'm living my life like every day is my last that's awesome and if you just had the worst day of your life you broke up with your girlfriend you got in a car accident and you're just feeling trash my hope is that you're gonna walk out having been changed by the piece wow and you can't delay that change. You have to take theater for what it is in the moment and let it affect you. Mm-hmm. I think that's my favorite thing about the art form. Wow. Um, so that, that definitely is part of it too as someone who struggles with depression. Wow. Theater is there. Whether, mm-hmm. you, whether you want it, need it or not, it is there. <laughs> Absolutely. And it is something that's helped me through so much. Wow. So I, I wanted to create a piece that could hopefully help someone through the way other pieces have helped me. Wonderful, man. You're so, you're so well-spoken. And I feel well, like... You. You're so believable, and I can only imagine too um, that that's another reason why your art uh, speaks so beautifully on stage. Probably why you ended up winning. Because I remember, um, I remember calling you that. I think I called you that night when you had won. I, I and think so. You were just. I remember you being like, "Oh my!" God, like so overwhelmed with emotion. Oh yeah. Because one experience, right? And like you said, it's so hard to get rid of the bug when you have it. I didn't touch. I, I hadn't touched theater in almost two years besides going to shows. Mm-hmm. And then we just did this cabaret and it, and it was like, I never left. It's no. seriously like I never left. You want to keep that ball rolling. Yeah. It's, I, I think that's one of the beautiful double-edged swords of theater, isn't it? Is that it's, it's kind of a fleeting high. You, mm-hmm. are, you're always chasing the next mm-hmm. project. Even when you're on a project, you're mm-hmm. like, what's the next one? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm glad you got the bug. Yeah. <laughs> glad you're back. I know it's been, uh, it's been wonderful because for me, it's like, I didn't, I didn't choose, um, I didn't choose theater for, for school. Like it was a big part of my life, but, um, I didn't, I didn't choose it, but I always wondered if it would creep back in some way. You know what I mean? I I always wanted to keep it up. I went on the same, you know, I, I left high school. I didn't do any theater in college at all period and you went to berkeley i did for people who don't know uh, yeah i I went to berkeley college of music which is primarily for for jazz pop and rock Mm -hmm. um really i mean it's it's was founded as a jazz school it's jazz Mm -hmm. above anything else Mm -hmm. um but they don't really have a musical theater community plugged in or they didn't when i was there they Mm -hmm. now own the boston conservatory so they have a little more really they do they they, it was a weird little merger thing it's strange still deciding how i feel about that that's kind of strange um, yeah but while i was there there was a musical theater club and that was really it. They had, I think, a musical theater songwriting course, mm-hmm. and there might have been a musical theater minor, but I even, wow. I'm even shaky on that. And, you know, I wasn't super secure in myself as an actor or a musical theater performer, so I just, I left it when I went to college. That was it. Hmm. And then, uh, you know, did two years at college, left, went back to Boston for a bit, came back here. I was working at a guitar center, and I saw a casting call for West Side Story at the CTG on my lunch break. <laughs> and I was like, hey, can I take a long lunch? And went over, auditioned, and... That's what kickstarted all this, because wow. you know I wondered if theater might creep back into creep back <laughs> into my life too. Yeah, yeah. And it did in the weirdest way. Hmm. But you, you know, I needed. I think I needed that time off to appreciate it. And yeah. it sounds like it might have done that for you for you as well. Yeah, it totally did. And and we've had conversations. Um, I've had conversations with a lot of um, men, a lot of just a lot of you know men who had done theater, who had done sports. Um, and I, I've, it doesn't really matter what part of theater you are, if you're acting or if you're backstage or whatever, it takes, I think it takes a real man to be able to do, to do theater in the way that you learn to empathize. And I've chatted about this before on this show, but, um, empathy is in my opinion, the epitome, um, of being a man, because I think that that draws out of you an entirely new and genuine and real perspective on life and perspective on people. And I don't know if you feel the same way, but I sound it's sounding like that's kind of what you're saying by all of this, you know, that you've grown out of 
your experiences in oh, theater and the absolutely. arts and immeasurably i mean mm-hmm. I, I had trouble talking to people in high school mm-hmm. and i was lucky enough to get into theater and that just that cracked me wide open mm-hmm. in twofold i mean number one it makes me comfortable in front of an audience and speaking but number two i learned to put myself in others shoes in a way that i had never done before mm-hmm. and I, I think empathy is the most valuable trait a person can have period mm-hmm. if you are empathetic people will want to be around you people mm-hmm. will care about you Mm. That that's the weird kind of thing about empathy is it's it's reflective. You make the people around you more empathetic. Wow. Cuz I think that you know, we as humans we can disobey our instinct mm. unlike most other animals. We we can say, you know, this thing that I feel that might be best for me is really going to hurt that person over there. I want to take care of them. Um not to say that you should abandon every opportunity mm-hmm. that is self-serving. Definitely like take care of yourself, but mm. it's so special that we get a chance to care for others and i think mm-hmm. empathy is the, it's the key that unlocks that whole door I, I if anyone if anyone is not empathetic i mean number one you probably don't know it but number two i'd encourage you to you know explore theater to try it it's the yeah. best yeah mm-hmm. one uh, adam driver goes and does theater courses with uh with active military members as a way of, right. of dramatic right. therapy yeah it's so beautiful what mm-hmm. this art form can do for us um so I, I definitely share that that view empathy it's, is it's so important the vulnerability that you as that's where it's beautiful to me and different i i've never quite felt the same connection when i'm on a film set pro pro or non you know or semi pro set i've never felt um loved and accepted the same way um that i did when i was in a company on stage and the the real interesting thing to me is um the fact that your vulnerability on stage and your vulnerability on stage that you share with your scene partners transcends to the audience because they're vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so it's so beautiful. That's might be the most beautiful thing about art is you have instant gratification or the complete opposite. And you have to learn um, that balance. It's it's just a it's such an amazing art form. And I we could talk for hours about <laughs> I'm sure we could about the two all of, of us this. specifically. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's uh that was very moving. That might have been one of that talk right there might have been one of my favorites that we've done so far. Thank you. Um and honestly we've covered most of all of my points, so I wanted to kind of lighten it up a little bit even and oh, just please. chat your inspirations. Cause I think that would be a I've I've asked that to many of my musical theater friends, but as a writer as well, I know you mentioned um, Sondheim and Jason Robert Brown. Love them. Wh- who, amazing. Amazing people. Yeah. Amazing people and talents. Um, what are some of the shows that have dramatically inspired you throughout your your just career? All right. Um, I really, I'm a big fan of, of Pasek and Paul. I really like Dogfight. Um, mm, wonderful. I think that Dogfight is a really, that, that show has influenced me in a lot of ways. I think musically, it's brilliant. It's, mm. it's one of my favorite scores that they've done. Wonderful. That's but I think that it's so show. interesting because your main character is not a perfect person by any means. In fact, you really don't like you don't him like for him. a good portion of it because he's not <laughs> yeah. a good dude. Um, Even though it was Derek Klenna in the original it, cast. Who is still charming. Don't like who him. is so <laughs> infinitely charming. <laughs> Um, yeah, be- yeah, because it's just, you know, he does despicable things, but he comes yeah. around mm. and I love, I love that that show doesn't try, it doesn't try and dress up Eddie Birdlace as like, as you know, the perfect guy, like one of his most famous numbers come to a party. He's lying through his teeth. He's, he's just bold faced lying to this woman. Um, yeah. But I think it's so interesting to watch that transformation and to mm. see sort of that spark of humanity awaken in him. Mm. Um, and I think that that's something I want to do as a writer. I want to capture like. Yeah, let's let's see real people have real experiences and really change. Mm. Um, especially because theater is such a subliminal art form. Like people yeah. walk out going, "Man, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to. I want to be that person." Mm. Um, so that that is definitely inspiring. I, I'm going to sound like every other musical writer on the planet, but duly so. Hamilton, mm. Hamilton reinvigorated the musical theater scene. Mm. Broadway's had the best sales ever. Mm. Um, it's a masterwork. It's mm. three hours sung and wrapped through. Just the writing is brilliant. The music mm-hmm. is brilliant. The story is such, it is so perfectly set that it's a history lesson and a parable on today's society politically oh, and, and racially. Absolutely. It's brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely brilliant. Um, really like those. Uh, goodness, that's the hardest question. It's like, it who is, inspires it is. you? Because I, <laughs> you know, I, even, even out of shows that I don't like, yeah, I always walk out going, 
man, but that one chord progression or like, man, yeah, but that one line. I know that one little section. Yeah. Yeah. The inspiration is everywhere if you just look for it. So for right. me, it's, you know, I, I, I am inspired by, I, we had a cast member leave once and we have a new cast member in and I'm inspired by a line reading that they gave because hmm. I went, I would have never thought to approach that. Um, but you know, Hamilton. Yeah. Wonderful. Do you have Hansen, Dogfight, um, all the the big ones uh, come from away yeah. the band's visit oh man I wow. I would have kicked myself if I had gotten through this without talking about the band's visit that's my <laughs> one of my favorite shows I had a yeah. like a transcendental experience seeing that I walked out and I was like this this is it this is, this is the apex of what I want to do because it's oh it's it's amazing yeah. Travis was showing me some of um, what is it Tiny Desk is that what it's called yeah t- the Tiny Desk little you know that yeah the MP- NPR and, yeah NPR yeah um they did Answer Me. Is that what it's called? What's yeah. That one oh, called? I love that one. Beautiful yes. song. Answer Me. They did a couple of, of the songs from the show. And I'm like, well, how unique is it to have an actual band, real musicians play on stage? It, oh, yeah. It, yeah, and Bandstand is the same way. I oh, don't know yeah. if you know Bandstand. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it got, For, it got passed over because of the season, which is unfortunate because it's a great great piece it's amazing and that was another one of those that, that blew me well, away and the, and the band's visit too again as someone who listened to Sondheim and JRB and it goes on those are mm. long you don't exactly go for like an easy breezy night of Sondheim like it it goes mm. um, to see a musical that was 90 minutes that was it no intermission didn't mm. have to be any longer mm. the music happened only when it needed to mm. it was perfect it was the perfect balance that show inspired me so much because it's just real people having a real experience and then it's over wow boom 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 there's no big kind of climax. The, kind of the best, though. Those are the yeah. best. I mean, we're getting to see... We're seeing Dear Evan Hansen at the Amundsen when it comes. <sighs> and that was part of our Christmas present, me and Travis. Because, you know, it's it's a pretty penny to even go see oh, yeah. the touring cast. But Hamilton is one of those that reinvented the touring cast. Because now you're getting a lot more companies coming out from New York that are touring. Because I think, I think if I may be so bold, that Hamilton reinvented theater absolutely in the way that now you're able to see a plethora of shows all over because there's a demand now yeah i mean think about hamilton's run where now i think they had we i talked about this with camden spino is that i believe they have five casts going right now sounds about right new york chicago dc london touring i think they have a london, london don't they? Yeah. touring in london yeah Something like five. It's insane. It's amazing. It's a, but then, Carousel is coming off of uh, and doing a run. Um, what are the other shows? Book of Mormon's always doing a run. Um, it's just amazing. It is amazing to see how it um, reinvented theater oh, yeah. and brought it to pop culture. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, when you when you take a theater history course, they talk about how musical theater can be defined as pre-showboat and post-showboat. Because showboat was like the first. Some yeah. people will say Oklahoma, but like you know, showboat in Oklahoma that that era. And, and Oscar Hammerstein, really, yeah. redefined, like, oh, yeah, we can tell a story with this. Mm. I think, give it 20, 30, 40 years, people are going to say that about Hamilton. It's going to be pre and post Hamilton. Mm. Because it, it it blew the doors wide open on on so many fronts, and, and you know, the best way. Theater is, you know, it's, it's, it's a medium by the people for the people. It really should be everyone is invited to the table. And Hamilton made a point to say, we want our spot at the table. Mm. And they took it. They, and took they earned it. it. Absolutely. Um, and Absolutely. I think that it's so beautiful to see now the wonderful stories from people of different cultures that are being brought to a stage that for, for decades was predominantly white and male. Even even as a white man, there are so many stories <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't bring to Broadway because they're not my stories. Right. But now the people who get to tell those stories get to bring them. We get to see a whole new side of, of life and culture and art. Um, I totally agree. Hamilton redefined musical theater, period. Hmm. Like that's that's it. I'm going to have so many highlights from this episode. <laughs> You're so well-spoken. It's oh, like, thank you. it's like putting, a, putting a question in an answer generator. <laughs> and it just comes out in a very genuine, non-robotic way. Oh, thank but, you. Try, um, yeah. So now I want to talk about your time with once. If you want to talk about, um, you mentioned to me how you got into the cast. Mm-hmm. If you also want to share where it is, how long your run has been. Yeah. And, the huge bonus in trying in getting an equity card. Yeah, no, absolutely. But go ahead and do um, that. So, so I'll give a brief overview of the early process. You know, first auditions were were September of this last year, mm-hmm. and uh, it was really cool because once only has a couple roles that need to play certain instruments. You need guy to play guitar. You need girl to play piano. That's yeah. it. 
yeah. then you have all the instruments for the show. You have violin, violin, cello, uh, mandolin, banjo, accordion. All of the other roles can play any of those instruments. So mm. the callbacks for the show, you had so many people who were like, yeah, I'm going for this role, but I play this instrument. So casting was this weird sort of Jenga tower of like, well, if we have a guitarist, we need a bassist. Hmm. And that means this cellist can't be in. Like, yeah. the strangest, yeah. or at least I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Originally, I was not I was not in the cast. It, they, they have a fantastic cast. What is, what's the playhouse? Uh, it's at the Lambs Players Theater. It's on Lambs Coronado Player. Island. Okay. Uh, it's okay. just off the coast of San Diego. Oh, it's, it's on beautiful. It's on Coronado. It's on Coronado. Oh, that's it's on amazing. Orange Avenue. It's right there. It wow. Is, it's like literally you can see the Hotel Dell from our theater. It's such a pretty like uh, on Wednesdays in between matinee and night shows, we'd go to the beach. Like that's what more can you ask for? That's um, amazing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> theater's like preach. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's um, amazing. But so, wow. you know, I, and I'm very, yeah. very young for the cast that they were going. Um, and the director was sent the super kind email that was like, we love you. You're very young. I was like, great, that's fine, no problem. Yeah. Um, I did a little shop of horrors up here at COC. I was just sort of figuring out what my next move was, and I got an email early April from the director that said, spot opened up, mm-hmm. you want in? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I came on as the MC, who is uh, a bit role, mm-hmm. but I'm also first guitar in the show. Oh, so cool. out of the 29 songs and musical cues in the show, I play guitar on 21 of them. Wow. Uh, yeah. So you're really playing more than you. Than I, I'm you playing speak. playing quite more than I'm speaking, yeah. but I also understudy Guy, who is the the lead. Track. Okay. Um, okay. So there's a lot to juggle. I'm also the music captain on the show. I was fortunate enough to be wow. selected as the music captain. So I, I wow. What a, but that's again that is like the band's visit, and um, you know in bandstand where mm-hmm. you know the cast plays. Yep. And what a cool that is such a Great neat. Comments. Great comment. Yep. Great comments like that as well. But that is that is such a cool and unique opportunity. Oh, it's been a blast. Um, wow. But so, Little Shop closed. Mm-hmm. We had our set strike. Like, literally, we closed on a Sunday, set strike on a Monday. Tuesday was first rehearsal for once. Wow. So, I packed up all my stuff, moved down to San Diego. My grandmother lives down there. So, oh, I, she has a guest nice. bedroom. Perfect. Stay Are you there, there right now? Yeah. Did well, you I mean, drive up from San Diego? Right now I'm in San Diego. Uh, right, yeah. Okay. I, I wow. come up every week. I, uh, I'm allergic to all the trees in the world. So I get okay. allergy <laughs> shots every week. Because as oh, a singer, here. it's not great to have allergy attacks when you're like sneezing and spitting. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, really? Yeah. Oh so, so I'm up here every week. Um, okay. But uh, but yeah, so we started rehearsals. It was a three-week rehearsal process. And that was it. So we did like one week wow. of really intense music, one week of really intense staging, and then a week of runs, and then previews. Um, Amazing. But it was just a blast. We were supposed to run first preview June 1st, and then we were going to close 22nd of July. We didn't even finish our preview week before they were like, hey, this is selling like hotcakes. We're going to extend to the 12th of August. Wow. You're like, great. Um, <laughs> announced that extension a week or two weeks later. Artistic director comes back in, and he's like, this is selling huge. We're going to extend to the 2nd of September. Um, so wow. already what was supposed to be a month and a half run is like three months june july august oh my gosh um wow yeah and so you know we maybe we'll extend again who yeah, knows maybe. um but it's it's been such a blast to be a part of it and then to be getting my equity card because the the theater Wonder. has now yeah. real quick did you know that you were gonna like, no when i signed on to the job i had no oh idea. my goodness well this it's like one beautiful thing in the show you made and then you know, follow that up, not even, what, maybe a year later. Yeah. And already, you know, there's another foot in the door. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's been, I, I've been so blessed with a, an embarrassment of riches. I have had so many things <laughs> yeah. luckily fall into place. Um, and I've been working for it, but I'm, yeah. I can't take all I, the credit. People, people who don't know Jimmy, you have to understand how hard he works. <laughs> Because I've I've only known him probably two, I think I've only that's, known you about two about years, two years. About two years. And, um, his work ethic that I have seen surpasses many <laughs> that I know Thank that you. have been fortunate. And I think that's a testament to you in the, in the sense that you really got to work for what you get. And also you have to get lucky. No doubt. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's crazy a combination. Yeah. Um, but so I signed on to the show. I, I knew I'd be getting a, a salary, which was going to be my first paid acting job. I was mm-hmm. so excited. Um, and I knew I'd be, um, understudying the lead. I was like, wow. great, that's good enough. I was lucky enough to be chosen as music captain, so I got a little pay bump, which was amazing. But but even more than that, to be an active part of the process, because mm. you know we we've had a couple cast members book other jobs and leave and had to replace them, so we had to get mm-hmm. new people up to speed. We didn't have any nights off, like literally Friday night. Was it this last week? It was this last week. Friday night was the last night of two of our cast members, three of our cast members actually, and then 
Saturday matinee, we had new cast members into those roles. Oh my gosh. And they were amazing. They were so is up it, to speed. Is it a it's semi professional production or is it professional? Because it sounds like it it sounds like it's the real deal. It, I mean, it's the real. We're all salaried actors. Several yeah. of the actors are union. It's, wow. um, you know, it, I would certainly call it professional because yeah. uh, these are all professional actors. These are people who wow. just do this. Some people might other might have other day jobs to supplement their income, but yeah. there are people in this show who just do this. Um, and it sounds like it's it's pretty substantial, no doubt, right now, at least for you, right? If you if you have a place to live. Oh yeah. Um, are you paying rent? <laughs> Not with my grandma, no. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, no, my grandma was like, come would, come. She, yeah. would she charge you rent? <laughs> no, she was like, as long as you like walk around a little Italy with me. Because she's like, I just need to exercise more. I was oh. like, great. Wow, that's a nice uh, deal. Oh, so yeah. you're just, right now, you're just saving and saving and saving, yeah, right? Yeah, trying my no best. Because yeah. um, ideally, I'm trying to get out to New York in January. But the big stipulation was, I spent January in New York last year. Mm-hmm. I went to about 50 calls. I got seen. I got to go in the room and sing for four of them. Because I'm non-union. It's just mm. so hard, you know, it, and that's not a, that's not a complaint. It's, I get it. There's not enough time to see everyone. No. Um, but you know, I, I get into Midtown early in the morning, sign up on these lists, wait for a couple hours and then they go, sorry, no time for non-union. Um, and so I went, I will only go back to New York if I'm union. Wow. Once starts up and they, you know, I didn't know if I'd be able to get any equity points or anything. Cause there's a, uh, are you familiar with, with how to get into the union and, uh, I am in film terms. Sure. Well, I don't for, know for if... those for those of you watching at home, uh, <laughs> there are two ways really to get into well, three ways to get into actors' equity. Uh-huh. Number one is to be in a sister union like SAG. Then okay. you can go. Okay. I'm going to be in equity as well. And then you can. Yeah, you can jump. transfer over. Um, there, there's it's a bit of a process, but right. for all intents and purposes, you can do that. Mm-hmm. Number two is EMC points, which is mm-hmm. working a number of weeks on a union show without okay. a union contract. Okay. Um, it's now 25 weeks. You need to do, do you need to do 25 weeks in two years. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, start over. Oh, uh, wow. Used to be 50. That actually just changed last year. 50 weeks. 50 weeks in two years. Oh my god. Yeah. Or option three, which is to get offered a union contract, and then you can just take your union card if you and want. And that that's kind of seen as like a like a hey, we're gonna take you right in, right? Yeah. yeah. If there's no no points, no waiting, right. you're you're in. Wow. Um, and so I was talking to the artistic director of the theater. And I was like, look, I'd, I'd love to get out to New York in January. I I can only do that if I'm union. You have the power to do that. You have the power to give me a union contract. And I told him, I was like, even as a show of good faith, because I know union members make more on shows. Yeah. I was like, if you make me union for those weeks, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, I'll come in extra hours. I'll, I'll donate part of my payback to the theater, whatever it takes. And he's like, you don't have to worry about that. Last couple of weeks of your contract will make you union. And then you can option to take your card straight through that. Oh my god! So it's what it's, a what a blessing yeah. to have. Oh my gosh! That see that must have given you chills, no doubt. Like, Absolutely. Well, I was, but you had the balls to go and ask. Yeah. A lot of people are just you know they're, they're snubs about. It. They're like, well, it, I don't. You know, it's a, they're not going to let me in anyway, so I'm not going to ask. Yeah. But you have to. Ask. It's a scary thing to ask. anytime you're an actor, especially because there are so many actors. It's mm-hmm. hard to negotiate because mm-hmm. you go, well, why can't they just find someone else? What is special right. about me? Right. But number one, you have to self advocate. Mm-hmm. You are worth it. You have to know your own value. Otherwise, mm. you've already lost the fight. Mm. But number two, it, it didn't even have to be a fight because the, uh, uh, Robert and Deb, the, the artistic directors at Lambs, the most fabulous, wonderful people you could ever, 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 ever hope to share a contract with. Deb is actually in our cast as well. Mm. They're so kind and so personable. And, you know, to be able to talk with, talk with Bob and go, I, I need this to make my career work. You know, for him, there's no benefit to that, no. to giving me right. that. Because if I ever come back to that theater, he's going to have to pay me union wages now. He's going to have to pay into my health insurance, et cetera, et cetera. But it's because he's he's a good guy. He sees potential in artists, and he understands it's a community. It's a family. Mm. So he went out of his way to make that happen, wow. which is I, – I am forever indebted to, yeah. to the, the people at Lamb's Players. They're a wonderful family of artists. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, that's just wonderful to think – that the, that you know i mean you you are 24 and i there is a bit of an age gap between you and i cuz i'm i'm 20 mm-hmm. going to be 21 in january um and it's for me right now i feel like i'm in an awkward stage because i'm pushing 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 to try to do the things that i want to do mm-hmm. um but it's tough because i'm this is my senior year and i'm still a student in college and people still really don't. I mean, I this could this doesn't have to just be college, but I feel like people still don't really take me seriously yet for what I'm doing, and how much work I put in. I mean, this summer has been all work for me. 
yeah work and play you well, know shows you've been fun. doing a lot of awesome stuff oh, i'm so trying cool. try thanks i i don't like compliments i don't take, <laughs> i don't take compliments i get it i get all like but squirmy. i i, I get weird about it but thank you i guess no, but course. i mean it's it's really um i know that the work will eventually pay off and I'm, that's why i'm so excited for for you because i think i understand the hustle and maybe as we kind of wrap up the spoken interview before you um perform a little bit um what's the future look like because you mentioned to me um also you have to to speak to the things about into light and how it's um being performed because you mentioned that as well as the thing that you told me about earlier yeah and so share that and then share about new york with your writing partner sure so here's the here's what the future looks like for me um i am currently in callbacks for another show that if i choose to take it would be immediately after once Wow. It'd be cool if it happens. Cool if not. Because either way, I'll, I'll have work through when I leave in January or I'll have some downtime. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, but for things that are for sure, uh, September 30th, Into Light is actually receiving its professional premiere uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska wow. um, through the Lincoln Theater Alliance. I believe it's, I believe it's called the Lincoln Theater Alliance. But it's uh, I got contacted by Pinewood Bowl out in Nebraska. They saw the video of my 10-minute musical and said, hey, we're doing a 10-minute New Works Festival. We'd like to buy the rights to your show amazing yeah and so it was just oh my gosh and it was weird because you know i i, I did the competition last yeah. last june yeah uh in april was when i filmed the submission video put it in and then never did anything else i never took it down there's no other footage of into light it's just that video and people mm. have been finding it because a mm. student at university of georgia back in march emailed me and said i want to do this for my directing project wow. um so it's it, i was very lucky to have people stumble upon it um so that receives its premiere on september 30th uh-huh. uh in in nebraska uh-huh simultaneous uh i'm working with uh victor trevino who's a filmmaker out okay. here okay uh he's an incredible friend of mine i've known him for well over a decade uh we're adapting into light into a short film ideally wow. for the festival circuit uh, wonderful yeah so yeah. we i actually just came from a script meeting uh wow. for that before i came here and this has never before this is, been told this is an announcement this is the <laughs> announcement we're doing my show is a platform <laughs> hey, you're doing it um oh, i'm just kidding yeah so it, no i mean it is it is you better problem. bring me viewers then <laughs> And subscribers. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna try. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do my best for you. No, uh, it's, it's wonderful, dude. That but uh, wonderful. yeah, so you know, and, and we're gonna we're gonna we have a little bit of budget we're still trying to make, so we're probably gonna do a Kickstarter and Indiegogo or something in the next yeah. month. But I mean, yeah. we're we're gonna be shooting on a black magic camera. We have. Uh, That's brain- what I use. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wonderful camera. Yeah. Which one? I'm I'm curious. I you know, to, I'd have to ask. Okay. You. I, that's <laughs> not my specialty. You're the content creator, so I would, yeah. I wasn't sure if you actually knew. No, well, we we've, we've been lucky enough to have. You know, we've got this incredible camera that Victor himself owns because he was oh. like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a yeah. filmmaker. And he's an amazing filmmaker. Yeah. So we have this great camera. We mm. have um, a bunch of lighting equipment. My, my my dad actually patented a new type of LED light, which is wow. now available. It's full RGBAW, five colors, programmable. It's insane. Wow. Now you're speaking my language. I know yeah, what you're there talking you go. about. Yeah. And it blows my wow. mind that he can do these things because wow. he just he's someone who just figures stuff out. Yeah. And so we've got access to this brand new type of light that just hit the market. Wow. We're lucky. It's going to be like a real going to be a real film set. Wow. Uh, but uh, so that's that's happening. We're going to do a little fundraiser. We're actually in casting right now. We put a notice wow. up on backstage. Yeah. Um, so we're intrigued to see submissions for more people. Amazing. But um, then after that uh potential move to new york in january i am currently developing a new musical with uh my good buddy nathan nathan mm-hmm. fossbinder mm-hmm. um some of you on the internet may know him from a viral video he made called dear evan oh no which I is know. uh I don't know I it's, know it's a clip of ben platt singing dear evan hansen but he has dubbed it over with uh screaming <laughs> uh, you've seen it yeah it's most people have uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. uh he is a fantastic musical theater writer in his mm-hmm. own right mm-hmm. um we've started developing this project so Look out for for that uh, in the near future, but that's that's what's on the docket. I'm wow. I've stopped saying I'm trying to do projects, and I've started saying I'm, I'm doing to. projects. So wow. I'm going to New York in January. I'm writing this musical with Nathan. I'm filming into light. Wow! Boom, boom, boom. Well, Jimmy, you're an inspiration. Well, thank you. Um, I think you're an inspiration to a lot of people that are um, uh, up and coming. You know, I think, I mean, it sounds like you would still identify yourself as up and coming, but in the same way. Um, just having a little bit more experience. I think a lot of the niche of the show is younger, which is neat. I'm hoping to expand that eventually, but it is neat. Um, and I hope this place, this show becomes a place where people can come and see creators, um, really share about their careers and share about how you can get there. Um, Mm -hmm. 
we're gonna have a quick quick little break and then a special performance um what song are you gonna be it's from into are you gonna do i'm gonna do a song from into light i'm gonna do one of the the shorter songs it's called day lilies and it is uh charlie's apology to beth for having left her alone um that's coming soon it's coming soon uh make sure that you guys follow along with us on instagram and facebook and uh subscribe we've got carly webster is going to be oh, on Thursday um, from The Voice and the Santa Clarita Local, who is about to launch her new album, um, which is really cool. Her EP. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say. So <laughs> her EP. I'll wait to see the episode um, when it comes out. Then. It's yeah. fine. But yeah, we're, we're really thankful that you guys are following along and watching. This is a, definitely a dream of mine. And it's wonderful to have guests like Jimmy on um, to eventually expand the show more. So we'll be right back. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> And we're back. Uh, as promised, I'm going to be playing the song Daylilies from my show Into Light. Uh, this number takes place just after Beth uh, admits that she hates a part of Charlie for what he did. And this is his uh, apology to her. If I could try the end again If I could see you in your hospital bed I wouldn't run out when you cry you tell me the cancer spread I'd stay there instead If I could have our last day If I could wipe every tear from your eyes I wouldn't bring you day lilies Cause I'd stop and I'd realize You bring lilies when someone dies I was so stupid and selfish You begged me to stay here please And if I had listened and stayed So you weren't afraid Then the last thing you saw Could have been me Instead of those daylilies This has been the 1 in 20 show. <laughs> I ruined a perfectly good moment. No, it was amazing. It's, it's follow, been... follow Jimmy at Jimmy Marino PDF. And thanks for watching, you guys.